Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Ollie Joe Prater. I've been up since three o'clock this afternoon. <laughs> they asked me to make an announcement. There's a brown Pinto parked out front, uh, Alabama license plates. Uh, you're not illegally parked, your lights aren't on or nothing, but it's making the club look real shitty. <laughs> Get out there and move that hunk of shit. <laughs> I think anybody that owns a Pinto ought to have to marry somebody who owns a Pacer. <laughs> Why won't anybody buy American cars? <laughs> Get your hands on a Toyota and you'll never let go. No shit, I had one. I couldn't sell that shit to nobody. <laughs> it's a planter at my sister's house now. <laughs> I used to drive an 18 wheeler, boy. Used to love to come up behind them pintos on the highway <laughs> real fast. <laughs> they know they'll explode. <laughs> if you ain't seen shit, you've seen a whole family crawl inside a glove box at 60 mile an hour. <laughs> I'm glad to be here. I haven't been feeling too well lately. I had a touch of that anorexia, you know. <laughs> Well, I got it whipped now. <laughs> it was nip and tuck there for a while. <laughs> Huntsville, Alabama, yeah. The comedy club, yeah. I'm glad to be here, man. I'm particularly glad to be here this week because I was in jail in Nashville last week. <laughs> The Huntsville looking pretty good to my fat ass. <laughs> you see, I drink. Then I insist on driving. You know, that shit ain't as popular as it used to be. <laughs> and a while back, I was headed up through Tennessee on Interstate 65 doing 82 and a 55. And all them numbers just fucked me up. <laughs> And I was shit-faced. <laughs> I was like one of them puppies in a Puerto Rican's back window. <laughs> All of a sudden, in my rear window, I saw God in the form of a Tennessee state cop. And God was pissed. God's demeanor didn't change much after he got up to my car, because I wouldn't roll my window down. <laughs> I think if you're God, you can hear me. <laughs> you know, there's a certain point when you're dealing with the police, you come to the realization, you know, I may not be sleeping in my bed tonight. <laughs> Cop said, all right, let's see your driver's license, registration and proof of insurance. Hell, I must have looked for that glove box for 10 minutes till I realized I was sitting in the front seat of his car. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> I felt like Vanna White when nobody gets a letter, you know. <laughs> Cops said, all right, we're gonna give you the field sobriety test. I said, I don't give a shit. I ain't gonna pass it. I ain't been studying. He said, put your heels together, put your arms out at your side, tip your head back, close your eyes, now with one finger, 
Touch your nose. Your nose. It's all right, now say your ABCs. Well, shit. A, B, C, D. Don't sing them. Oh, shit. I'm going to jail. Well, I got to sing them. It's how I learned the goddamn thing. Try to say them, get up around Q and R, and the shit falls apart on me. Well, it took me in. You know, it's the dumbest thing. You're so goddamn drunk, you can't grab your ass with both hands. They get you in there and say, all right, I want you to blow on this breathalyzer. I figure, shit, I'm already in jail. Why don't you blow on my breathalyzer? They didn't think it was quite that funny. Make a long story short, I blew on their breathalyzer. And the readout came and said, one at a time, please. Yeah, they locked me up. I woke up the next morning a minority. Something I've never been before. Woke up in jail with me and 15 brothers. Made my shit kind of weak now. I said to myself, you know what, Hoss? You better try to fit in here. You know that white supremacy bullshit this morning. So I start walking around the cell. Tattening, motherfucker. <laughs> grabbing my dick. <laughs> Till they start grabbing theirs. <laughs> I'm sitting on the bench and this big brother walks up to me. He says, what are you in here for? I said, well, you see, I got AIDS and they didn't have no place to put me. <laughs> well, that made their shit real weak, yeah. I started chasing them around the cell. Hey! Come on, brother, I brought this in for you. They didn't want any. As a matter of fact, they all gave me their lunch. <laughs> I said, keep that weight up, buddy. Well, that's the first thing you learn about anybody who suffers from the disease AIDS. The first noticeable thing is massive weight loss. <laughs> I live in Los Angeles. Age are at epidemic proportions. Fat men are at a premium. <laughs> Women won't leave me the fuck alone. <laughs> Try to walk down the street. <laughs> it makes you feel so cheap. <laughs> like I'm gonna jump in the car with four or five crazy women. <laughs> you bet your sweet ass. <laughs> I'll jump in the car with a dead woman, man. <laughs> You say, shit, baby, you don't even have to move. I've been married twice. <laughs> You're a little warmer than the last one. Yeah. <laughs> Your ass been dead, anyhow. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of things I used to do. I just don't do it all anymore. Driving, of course, is one of them. <laughs> I don't book myself in Arizona in the summertime no more. Tell you something right now, fat people. Arizona, in summertime, don't mix. <laughs> As a matter of fact, Phoenix is an Apache word for Jesus Christ, it's fucking hot! <laughs> and all the locals can say, it's dry heat! There's no humidity, it don't bother you none, it's dry heat! <laughs> yeah, won't you kiss my wet ass? <laughs> I got your dry heat hanging, pal. Any Canadians in here tonight? All right, let's talk about them fuckers. I was up there recently, and that was real goddamn rude to me. They don't like us up there very much. Well, maybe it was me. I prefer it was us. They kept telling me, you people down in the United States are ignorant and apathetic. I said, hey, I don't know, and I don't give a shit. I told them off. But I take that bullshit. They got too much snow in Canada for me, man. I don't compute snow. 
I live in Beverly Hills, California. You find any snow in my yard, that shit fell out of my pocket. <laughs> and I'll shovel it myself. A lot of reasons I don't like snow. I got short legs, there's one. My thermometer hangs a little closer to that shit. <laughs> and you don't want to get no snow on the end of your thermometer, boys. It'll start hiding up in your ass somewhere. I said, I don't know, baby, I had it with me when we went out. Maybe I left it in the car. Uh, they got a thing up there called a wind chill fucker. Come in the house and say, God damn, it's cold. Well, that's the wind chill fucker. <laughs> Tried to teach me to ski when I was in Canada. That's some funny shit there. You can see where I ski. People driving to the mountain can see where the hell I ski. <laughs> what the hell's that up on? Looks like Bigfoot. All they could see up on that mountain was this track here, this track here, and that big pile where my fat ass was dragging. <laughs> you get scared, your ass will grab twigs and shit, and I ain't lying. You start building a nest. It's not a pretty story, but it's one that had to be told. I love the beer in Canada. They got great beer there. They, got, they tried to give me some moose head up in the mountains. <laughs> now, I know I don't look like much, but I draw the line at wild animals. I ain't never had no moose head. <laughs> what do you think they hold them by them big antlers? Wow! Be gentle, Bo Wiggle. I ain't never had no moose head. I've had me some grizzly pussy in my life. Yeah, I said that. I'll say it again if I feel like it. You probably figured out by now this 8 to 700 club. You got any problem with descriptive language or subject matter, I suggest you hit the fucking door right now. Because it's going downhill directly. So you gotta excuse me tonight, folks. I'm ripped to the tits right now. I didn't have nothing to do today, and that wasn't that great a day. So I sat inside and watched it. Learned to roll my first one paper joint. You know how much pot you can put in a copy of USA Today? I had to set a chair on fire to light that sucker. I'm just bullshitting with you. I don't smoke pot no more. Used to, boy. Used to smoke a lot of it. The shit ain't good for you. It ain't. Look at me. I'm only 19 years old. Marijuana's got an adverse effect on me. I get hungry. I don't get them munchies. I was born with them suckers. I get hungry. I smoke a little marijuana late at night. Come on, put ketchup on both sides of the refrigerator. <laughs> you ever get tore up on that shit? Come on, late at night and open up the refrigerator door and slide a chair on up there. And start eating. You'll eat shit you never dreamed of. Frozen pork chop ain't that bad. Put a little chocolate syrup on that sucker. Kind of like a meat brownie. And I ain't seen my dog in two weeks. He's a hunting dog. I told him when I got him, you get hungry, boy, hunt. <laughs> Shit in the house is mine. See, marijuana will make you stupid. That's why they call it dope. You ever get an eye on it, get in your car to go somewhere, can't remember where in the hell you're going? <laughs> You become an optimist, you say, well, I remember when I get there. <laughs> or walk around the house for 20 minutes looking for your keys, and they're in your goddamn head. <laughs> and God forbid you smoke that shit and go grocery shopping. <laughs> you can only put so much Captain Crunch in one of them carts. <laughs> I do real stupid shit when I get high on pot. You know that Crave Cat food? 
Hey, it comes in the same side box as grape nuts. It was dark. I ate a whole box that shit one. With bananas. And yogurt. Ended up sleeping out in the backyard all night. Coughing up hairballs. Well, I was out there all night just licking my nuts, man. And singing. Meow, 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 meow. I'm just kidding with it. I can't lick my nuts, man. If I could, though, my old lady would be history. I'd just be laying around the house sucking my own dick. Finally, get it done right once. And these are just jokes. I don't suck no dick. I don't want to piss off anybody that does. You know who you are. I did a lot of drugs in the 70s, man. I don't care what the temperature is now. <laughs> I did acid once, LSD. It had no effect on me whatsoever. Except I woke up on the inside of a water bed. <laughs> well, Goddamn baby, you got a nice ass, but let me out of here! <laughs> LSD make you paranoid, man. I did some one time, went to a football game, wrong move. Every time the teams got in the huddle, I thought they was talking about me. <laughs> Quaaludes, boy, you ever do them things? Oh, I used to love them fuckers. I love bumping into shit. I used to like to take a couple of Quaaludes, drink a couple of beers, a couple shots of tequila, four or five Valiums, and dry. <laughs> You know you might hit something, but who gives a shit? You do enough quaaludes, backing out of your driveway is a long trip, brother. Get down the end, look up and see your house, forget what you're doing, say, shit, I made it home! Everybody's playing with cocaine nowadays, though, you know? Yeah, cocaine. Shit's dangerous, it'll kill you. It's expensive, too. Cost me a lot of money, man. <laughs> I got a three-bedroom farm right here. <sighs> Ferrari parked over here. <laughs> I think about getting this part here just cut fucking out, you know, <sighs> straight to my brain. See, the shit's dangerous, man. Gets you in a lot of trouble. I got busted, you know. That's a bitch. It's my own fault. I was all fucked up one night. I was coming home from San Diego. Go, I'm go, going from San Diego, going home to Los Angeles. And the cops stopped me for trying to snort this white line off the freeway. <laughs> it looked too good to be a true. <laughs> but the speed bumps what got me in trouble. <laughs> Look at the rocks in this shit. <laughs> I can tell you how to simulate the feeling of cocaine without breaking the law. This is a simulation. So you know what everybody's talking about. First you brew yourself a couple of strong pots of coffee. I'm talking strong coffee. And you drink it real fast. Then you take some old baking soda. You just shove it up in your nose. You know, just pack it in there. Then you take a hunk of sandpaper and you hook it on your finger and you just tear your fucking nose up. Yeah. And then you take your money out and burn it. <laughs> Same feeling. <laughs> you wake up broke with a sore nose. Talked to my future ex-wife today on the phone. <laughs> Her name's Plaintiff. You know? She's pretty happy with me right now. I tell you what, I fucked up. Christmas, I bought her a vibrator. She don't miss me as much as she used to. <laughs> it's a good one, 35 horsepower. It's made by Black & Decker. Had a chain break and everything. I called my neighbors while I was on the road and they said, hey, your old lady putting in a pool? Nah, she just misses me. But she's pretty happy with me now. I took her to Bahamas for 15 days in February. That's because I fucked up the major part of January. And payback's a bitch. 
and payback I did $7,500. Women love it when we fuck up men. <laughs> you know why? Because they get to put that thumb on our ass. Say, yeah, there you are, yes. <laughs> All right, put your dick in the drawer. Go on, go on. <laughs> you ain't gonna need it? No. My old lady's sitting there writing them checks. Is it funny now, fat ass? <laughs> Bitch. Yeah. We had a good time, though, I gotta admit it. She wasn't happy to have a nice suite in a nice hotel. Oh, no. She had to have a villa. <laughs> Listen to the women. <laughs> My favorite part of the villa, we had servants. What the concept? People that just do shit for you. Anything. Get up in the morning, God damn it, I feel like jogging. Julio, take off. <laughs> you get back, I just might want to work out, God damn it. You ain't tired, am I? <laughs> I was talking to her today. I said, what's happening, baby? I miss you. She says, well, I went to the doctor yesterday. I said, no shit, you okay? What doctor say? She says, you know, the doctor said I had the breasts of an 18-year-old girl. <laughs> I said, did he say anything about that 35-year-old ass of yours? <laughs> she says, no, your name didn't come up, really. Bitch. <laughs> <laughs> she got real pissed at me one day. I know you find that hard to believe. She says, I'm going to cut you off. I said, shit, you don't even know where I'm getting it. <laughs> Wrong answer, guys. <laughs> Woman got no sense of humor whatsoever. Tell you where I didn't get any for quite some time. Yeah. Talk to my boys today. Man, that's always a trip. A couple of wild little fuckers. I don't know where they get it. Yeah. <laughs> I was talking to them today, man. I fixed their young asses. I hired them a nanny. Old Irish woman. Ain't got no kids of her own to kill no more. So I gave her mine. I'm standing in the breakfast nook one morning, and drinking a cup of coffee, getting ready to go to bed. My boy standing there getting ready to go to school. She looks at my son Caleb. Now let me preface this by explaining to you, my son Caleb is an enthusiastic little shit. She looks and says, Caleb, what you want for breakfast? Cause I want some fucking French toast. <laughs> she just smacked him, down he went. He's laying there looking up at me, I said, hey, I don't want none of that shit. <laughs> You're on your own, dickhead. <laughs> His little brother's standing there needing nervous, boy. She said, Joshua, what do you want for breakfast? He said, I don't want no fucking French toast. <laughs> Give me some fucking eggs or something. <laughs> boy, smart, goddammit. Takes after his daddy. Whoever he is. <laughs> they say you should never hit your kids. I don't know who the fuck they are. <laughs> but they ain't never met my fucking kids. <laughs> I smack them little fuckers just in case they're going to do something later. <laughs> What's that for? I don't know. Now, they, you, they say you should never hit your kids in anger. When are you supposed to rap these little fuckers? <laughs> when you're feeling festive? You know? <laughs> you get up in the morning, boy, I feel good today. Tommy, come here, mother. <laughs> Boom. All right, now go play. Remember, daddy loves you. <laughs> Stand that shit. I wrestled in college, man. I, uh, I wrestled in college. Not that shit you see on TV, but I really, I mean, this is collegiate. I went to the University of Michigan, and, and it's a fine school, and, and, and I, uh, I wrestled. We wrestled the Russians once. Oh, God. You know, that shit ain't fair. I don't give a fuck. I was 19 years old and been wrestling since I was 13. The guy I wrestled <laughs> was 31, been wrestling since he was six. <laughs> and I got to wrestle this motherfucker. <laughs> Yippee fucking I.O. <laughs> So my coach says to me, he says, hey, listen, he says, I don't want you to get hurt here. We need you from the future. This man is very, very tough. He invented a hold called the octopus hold, which can really fucking hurt you. 
That's when a guy wraps his arms and legs around your arms and legs and tries to like, break you in half. <laughs> he says, so I'll tell you what, he says, I don't want you to get hurt now. If you get out there and you get you knocked to my soul, I'm going to give you a few counts to get out of it. But if you can't, I'm throwing in the towel. I said, don't worry about it, coach. <laughs> yeah, I'm confident. <laughs> I'm dick hard and ready to go, you know. <laughs> Hostile, mobile, and agile. <laughs> so I get out there and I'm wrestling this guy, man. And uh, I last about, oh, 13 seconds. And <laughs> he's got me in that octopus hole. <laughs> but I reversed it, man. First time it's ever been done. And I beat this guy. I came off the mat, boy, my coach said, I cannot believe it. He says, nobody's ever, what the fuck, how did you do it? And I said, well, coach, I'll tell you what, you know how my ego is. I got to wrestle this. He got me that octopus soul. I was embarrassed. My folks are here. I was laying there all twisted up, and I looked up, and I saw this set of nuts. <laughs> so I just bit them. <laughs> and you don't know the energy you get when you bite yourself in the nuts. <laughs> I love my dad. I, I remember the last words my father said to me before he died. Solid Joe, that gun's loaded. <laughs> it's just a joke, okay? <laughs> I didn't shoot my father. I didn't kill him. Okay? I love my dad. I, do. I love him, but I think he's losing his fucking nut. The man, the man mows the lawn all the fucking time. That's all fathers do. I didn't know why fathers mowed mow the lawn until I had kids. Then I realized when that lawn mower's running, you can't hear them fucking kids. <laughs> Go bother your mother. God damn it, get away from me. I love my dad. But I'm a comedian and I need the laughs and he ain't here to defend himself, so fuck him. <laughs> I love my dad, but I could never go in the bathroom behind that dude. <laughs> what do fathers eat? God! <laughs> Man had the same dinner I had! <laughs> he had to have a chemical breakdown at lunch. <laughs> Something crawled up and that dude just flat ass died. <laughs> my dad had the same routine ever since I can remember. He'd come home from work, eat dinner, grab the newspaper, and boom, right in the bathroom. <laughs> Sitting there about an hour. Then he'd come out in this big cloud behind him. <laughs> Take one look at me and say, okay, son, you can do it or not. <laughs> oh, no. I think I'll wait till I'm a little older, you don't mind. Got in there, burnt my eyebrows off last night. My dad was gross, boy. Always walking around the house in them goddamn ugly boxer shorts. <laughs> The ones that are so old, the ass is all wore out of them. Fly won't close, his dick keeps falling out of them. Walking around burping, farting, and sipping coffee. Yeah, that's my dad right there. I'm gonna be just like him when I grow up. You can take my dad off of solid food for two weeks. Give him nothing but water to drink, and somehow, miraculously, he turned this into gas. <laughs> and you know when your dad's got something good like that, he can't wait to share it with you. <laughs> My dad would walk up to people he didn't even know. <laughs> Friends of mine, he's meeting for the first time, said, hey, how you doing there, son? Pull that finger. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Don't bullshit me, man. I look at some of the women, they go, what? What's he mean? Fart? What? No. That's because women don't fart. They don't. Women putt. Or poo. And it's just a little. And perfume comes out. Yeah. It's not a great perfume, but it's a good one. I think it's Charlie or something like that. We got women walk around this country right now going, I just cut one in, it smells like Charlie. Yeah. Men fart in chunks. 
You know it's true, ladies. Men would save their farts in mason jars if they could. Hide them underneath the bed. So they can walk up behind you a month later and go, hey, baby, deja vu. You see a man with tears rolling down his cheeks after he let a horrendous fart, he ain't hurt. He's just sad because it got away. And men never, 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 ever fart in front of women when we first meet you. The first six months we know you is like a six month moratorium. We're trying to impress you, not depress you. Doing our best to convince you, no, I ain't like your dad and your brothers, honey. I'm a different man, I love you. And that first six months is tough, too. That's her. Boy, guys, we're taking these women, we're going out to the movies, eating that popcorn with all that oil on it. Throw some bonbons in there, some goobers. Yeah. Wash it all down with a big bucket of soda pop. And then sit there for two hours and watch a movie. Then after the movie, go out dancing, just get all that shit just jiggling. Yeah. Then later, I said, God damn, baby, I'm hungry. Let's go get some breakfast. Sitting there eating them eggs, grits, drinking coffee. All of a sudden, uh, can just feel one brother. But it's the first six months of relationship. We're gentlemen. So we just tighten up her butt. And we excuse ourselves from the table. And we walk around the corner and share it with people we never met. Of course, after six months, it's a whole new ball game. We're saving them up all day, huh, guys? Get home, get in bed, hey, honey, come here, man. Got a surprise for you, mama. Grab her head under the covers and let her out. Bikers call that foreplay. You ever cut one, don't say nothing about it, and watch people just stumble into it? You ever laugh so hard you fart by accident? That had me in a movie once. I'm sitting there. <laughs> Guy beside me says, how dare you fart before my wife? I said, brother, I didn't know it was her turn or no shit. I came in late, didn't get no program. Sometimes you're guilty by association. You didn't perpetrate the crime, but you're standing there with all the evidence. <laughs> Nashville, Tennessee, I jump on the elevator, push the button, the door closes. Jesus Christ! Somebody died in that thing. Well, I just did this shit. Got down the lobby, everything was cool. The door's open, but this family was walking on. They thought I did it! All week I'm staying in the same hotel, they're going, there he is, right there, buddy. That's the fat son of a bitch shit in the elevator, kids. Well, I'm a human being. I'm not about farting in an elevator. I farted on an airplane once. <laughs> and then mass came down. People in first class say, crash this fucking guy. <laughs> I was talking about my daddy. I love my father very much. That's why I do so much humor about him. Uh, my dad's a pretty slick dude, man. Uh, I remember when I was, this is a true story, when I was 16 years old, I wanted to have a car for my 16th birthday like all men do, you know. I had long hair at the time, I was a hippie. Father hated that shit. He said to me, he said, I'll tell you what I'll do, son. He says, if uh, you get good grades this last semester, it's cool. Get your part-time job this summer, save some money, and cut your hair, I'll buy you a car for your 16th birthday. God damn. 
I cracked them books, got some good grades, man. Got a part-time job, saved all that money, but I just could not cut my hair. But my father's religious, so I devised a little plan of my own, being my father's son. <laughs> I came home from Bible class on Sunday, and I went, my dad asked, hey, daddy, I was reading in the Bible today where Jesus had long hair. He said, that's right, son. If you'd have read a little further, though, you'd see where Jesus walked every goddamn place he went to. <laughs> Yeah, you slick, all right. Uh, anyway, I got to leave out of here on, on Monday. I've been here all week. It's been so much fun. I love Huntsville. You're all great people, man. And, uh, prettiest goddamn women in the world in Alabama. I ain't lying, boy. Mm. And the horniest fucking men.